everyone, and welcome to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod, Teacher's Edition. So today, the topic we are going to be covering is something very basic, especially for those uh, who have been teaching the course for a while. So this is going to be more for new teachers and beginners. And the topic for today is going to be course organization. How is it that you can kind of take a big picture view of things to get the course well organized so that you feel a little bit more comfortable heading into the school year and help not only you but also your students be successful in the course and then on the human geography exam. So when we're starting off getting organized for the course, the very first thing that you need to do is get a calendar. So every year at the beginning of the year, I print off and I am, I am, uh, you know, I would say that I'm a no frills kind of guy. And so I just print off the, uh, the months of the year and you'll see that I don't really have a whole lot written on my calendar. Basically, I just have, uh, the days that we're out of school, the holidays that we have, uh, when we start school, you know, just a real basic school calendar. And then I have the different test dates that I'm going to uh, going to have throughout the year. I teach two courses. I have Human Geography and then AP European History. And so that's really how I keep up with it uh, throughout the year and I kind of organize myself. So you need to get yourself a calendar. Print that bad boy out. The next thing that you need to do is you need to go to the AP College Board website and you need to look at the date of the AP exam. This year, the year 2000, the school year, 2017, 2018, the exam is going to be on the 18th of May, which is actually uh, a week later than they normally have it. I'm not privy to all the inside information, so we have, but we do have about an additional week uh, in order to get ready for the test. So you need to find out what day you start school. You need to look at what uh, day the test is. And so you need to figure out how many days you have to teach the course. Now, this is where we get into a lot of, uh, I'd say we get into a lot of muck because every teacher you talk to, they have kind of a different situation. Well, I'm on block schedule. Well, I only teach half the year. You know, we start after labor, whatever. A lot of this is gonna be highly personal. So uh, to you, because it's either gonna be based upon what your school schedule is like, it's gonna be based on how you like to do things personally in the classroom, so really just kind of take this as a general idea and in a way to provide you some general guidelines for how to get ready for the class. So number one, you get a calendar, find out the day of the AP test, figure out how many days it is that you have to teach the class. You need to start counting backwards from the AP test date to the very first day of school. So when you're doing that and getting those things ready, you want to make sure one of the first things that you do is build in probably at least a week and a half it, you know, two week cushion for exam review. Okay, you don't want to leave yourself where you're getting done with the course at the very end of the year and you don't have hardly any time for, for exam review. Especially those of you who teach freshmen. Freshmen uh, don't necessarily, a lot of them don't necessarily have the skills uh, yet developed, the academic skills yet developed so that they know how to study large amounts of uh, material that they've been using all year long. Uh, and so you're going to need to structure some review time for that. And so, again, I would encourage you a week and a half to two weeks, somewhere in there, uh, just depending on what makes you feel comfortable, things along those, things along those lines. Now, some other things we need to consider. Uh, consider your, your local school calendar. Okay, so what days do you, got, do you have holidays for? Uh, when is your semester break? And I mean, like for Christmas, uh, for us, it's Christmas break, and that's when our break is. And so I really have to be careful about when I'm scheduling tests and when we're going to wrap things up. I know the way that we do breaks now, at least in our district, uh, we kind of we try to take kind of like a full week break every couple of months, and so that really makes things tricky, especially when I'm trying to plan on when I can have tests. Uh, and so you really have to pay attention to those things. Also consider some of your end of the year testing calendars. Around here, once we hit the month of May, uh, pretty much everything's shot because you're seeing your kids maybe every other day because they're off testing. Um, they're being pulled out of class. So you very, you very rarely have a full classroom, and so you have to consider those things. And so, really, for me, even though the test isn't until May the 18th, I want to be done with all content by the beginning of May because, again, things are going to be hectic. Kids are going to be doing end of course testing and all these other types of tests they have to take. So, I want to be done uh, at the beginning of May. Uh, I may not be reviewing. I may have a test that first week of May. But uh, that's really when I want to be done with the main, uh, the main thrust of, of my content. So again, first thing you want to do, get your calendar printed out. Then you, want to, uh, then you want to look at that, look at when the AP exam date is. 
figure out how many days you have to teach a class, especially if you know you have a, a semester long class and you gotta you know, you're gonna have to kind of double down on some things. Um, the next thing you want to do is go get the course outline. Okay, this is really easy to find. You just go to the College Board website, find Human Geography. Uh, you know, it's a several hundred page document. Uh, European history one's bigger, but uh, yeah, it gives you it gives you all of the topics that you're going to need to cover for the year. Now we'll go over topics and content in a later video, but you want to get that course outline because what it does is it shows you the way the course is breaking broken down in terms of you know I break it down into units, however it is that you want to break it down, but. Uh, essentially, the College Board breaks the course down into seven units for the year. Now, I know some people like to combine units. Uh, for beginners out there, I would highly encourage you just to keep it seven that the College Board has uh, that are already there in the course outline. For those of you who are a little bit more advanced and have been teaching the course for several years, obviously you kind of already know what you want to do. So, um, it, some people like to combine things here and there. So, you get your course outline, you look at your topics, then go get your textbook. Okay. Once you've gotten your textbook, you need to look through there and, and look at what chapters you have in your textbook. And you need to figure out which chapters go with which topics on the course outline. Because the, because the course is relatively unique uh, and, and not many textbook writers for it, I would assume, and I, have, I haven't looked at all of them, but I would assume that most of them are pretty similar, going to follow the course outline pretty well. Some of them may not, so you just got to pay attention to that. I know for for us we use Rubenstein, and so for the most part his his chapter flow follows the course outline in the way that we like to do the course. But just pay attention to that. Look at where those chapters fit into uh, the different units. So you've got your you've got your calendar, got your course outline, got your textbook. Now you need to start looking at uh, which chapters are going to fit into those seven units that you're going to do throughout the year. Once you have those chapters in. Then you can kind of start to get a feel for how long it's going to take you to cover the topics that are in uh, that are in each particular unit. Generally speaking, uh, we spend uh, no less than four weeks, no more than six weeks on any given unit, just depending on which topic we're covering. Some of the more uh, some obviously the shorter ones are going to be the four week. On average, though, across the board, we like to spend about five weeks, and that fifth week. Actually, we're talking about five weeks. Five weeks actually includes the week of testing, okay? And so, you know, we'll probably in the way we work, we have a modified A B block schedule, and so uh, we see kids Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, Thursday as a block. So, you know, we can either cover content Monday, Tuesday, then test on Wednesday, Thursday on those block days, uh, and then begin the next unit on Friday, or we can uh, content review on Tuesday test Wednesday, Thursday. It really just depends on, on how things are going. So anyway, uh, e even if it is five weeks, really that fifth week for us uh, is going to be testing week. So really it's more like four and a half weeks in terms of uh, being able to cover the content. So that's why having your calendar and sticking to your calendar is going to be so important because if you don't, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up going over on some topics and then you're not going to have enough time at the end of the year in order to uh, review for the test, and you're going to be rushed on a couple of topics. So really important to stick to your calendar. Figure out what days you want to have tests on, uh, and do that at the very beginning. That way you know when you have your predetermined time uh, that you have to be done with your unit. If you like to review for a day, you know you need to be done a day early, and so uh, that is going to allow you to, uh, to be a little bit more organized. And so really at the beginning of the year, those are the three things that you need in order to get yourself organized for the course. You need a calendar, you need the course outline, and you need your textbook. Once you've got those things figured out and you're able to schedule the course, figure out when you want to have the different tests and whatnot, then you can really begin to build uh, your course around those particular dates. Okay, And again, those who are more advanced, they might have a different opinion, different take on things. And a lot of this is just really depend on what kind of a teacher you are, the things that you like to do in your in your personal classroom. But again, I'm I'm a very uh, no frills kind of guy, uh, kind of straightforward and very direct in the way that I teach. And so I know that I found this to be very helpful uh, for me as I've gone throughout the years of planning and getting kids ready for the AP test. So there you have it, uh, course organization 101 from Mr. Elrod. I hope you found that to be helpful. And as always, I hope to see you next time.